presentation. Uh, my name is Kai Hua. I'm a PhD student from Imperial College London. And my research is focusing on blockchain and the DeFi security and the privacy. And I'm happy here to present our work on attacking the DeFi ecosystem for fun and profit. All right, so to, to start with, I would highly recommend the, the video from Ray Dalio. Uh, in this video, he briefly explained how the traditional economy works. So how people exchange goods and uh, how people lend and borrow money. So which is interesting, interesting in this video, we have find out is that the loans and debts are actually one, one of the main factors that impacts the eco economy, at least in the short or in the middle term. So, so what is a debt essentially? Let's look at the scenario here. We have Bob who is young and uh, who wants to run his own business of turntable, but he doesn't yet have the money to, to buy the turntable. So typically he can ask some like senior person but to lend him some money to buy the turntable and the Bob prom promises that he would repay the money back plus some interest at some point because he thinks that he can generate some, some positive uh, profits in his own business. So yeah, the, the story sounds very nice, but what could go wrong? Uh, obviously, um, Bob can go bankrupt. Maybe he isn't able to make any incomes and he may make some bad decisions in his business and lose a lot of money. And then he would finally default his debit, which means he can't pay back the money back he borrowed. This is actually quite uh, risky for the lender, but, right? So um, the underlying question is what can we do here? Is that possible that um, Bot can lend Bob some money without the risk that Bob defaulting his debt. So this this sounds infeasible in the traditional financial economy because there is always some risk. Even the risk can be um, mitigated by collateral, uh, which um, which can uh, which which is also somehow the traditional crypto space uh, reduce the risks in lending and borrowing. In lending and borrowing. So uh, by collateralizing some assets, you can borrow some money under the value of your collateral. But still, the lender yeah, is exposed to some risks. So this is, this is why and where the flash loans come into play, thanks to the uh, atomicity of the blockchain transactions. So flash loans are uh, the loans that happen in one single transaction. So in the flash loan, you take some money, uh, take, take some money from the liquidity pool, um, like RV or DYDX, then you do something crazy. You, I mean, you can do whatever you like, uh, it's, it's totally up to you, but finally you need to repay the money and plus some interest. So the interest rate depends on um, the, the, on which platform you choose. I believe RV charges now 0.09% of the total board amount of money. And uh, so in a flash loan, um, the interest part is that uh, if the borrower can't repay the enough money in the last step, the, the whole transaction will be reversed. <coughs> and because the transaction is, is atomic, so the, the borrowing never happens, which means either borrowing and the repaying happen together or none of them happens. So, which means there will be no risk for the lender. Mm, you may wonder that um, how long is the loan? Because in the, in the traditional finance or in the traditional crypto space, borrowing and lending, there is always a period, period for the period for the borrowing and the lending. But in, uh, uh, in a blockchain transaction, 
there is actually not a notion of time. Even in a, in a whole block, there is a, not a time concept, which means the, the, the transactions are just executed in sequence, but uh, you can think of the transaction happens instantly. So uh, what I want to say is that uh, the flash loan actually has no period. It just happened, everything just happened, happens instantly. Mm, now then we have the flash loan. The next question is what can we do with flash loans? Um, so, so, so in the crypto space, it's quite nice and cool that uh, with the flash loans, everyone has access to a large amount of capital and uh, you can do with the capital whatever you want, you want. And you only need to pay some of the transaction fees and the flash loan interest, uh, which typically at the most uh, like 100 or 200 USD dollars. And uh, with flash loans, we, uh, we have seen some very interesting use cases. One is um, arbitrage. So for those who are not familiar with arbitrage, arbitrage is about to, to make profits uh, utilizing the price difference between different markets. So given the flash loan, a trader can perform arbitrage on different on-chain decks without the need to hold a monetary position or uh, being exposed to the, the risk of your assets, the price of assets going um, pumps and dumps dramatically. So in our example, the, the trader takes a flash loan with 100 Ether and uh, he used the Ether to buy 1,000 DAI in market one. And uh, then he sell, the, sell this 1,000 DAI uh, at the market two and gets 101 Ether back. And uh, finally, he repays 100 Ether to the liquidity pool and uh, left with one Ether profit. So uh, with flash loan, you actually don't need any, don't need a much upfront uh, yeast balance to perform such arbitrages and uh, making real profit. So yeah, this is a, a real world example happened uh, in the January of this year. And uh, yeah, we can see that uh, the trader just, uh, you know, uh, takes some DAI flash loan and uh, performs some trading between DAI and SAI and end up with some, some revenue. Um, so uh, what is interesting is that this specific example actually didn't make any profit because the, the revenue is quite low, uh, only with only like 3.3 .3 USD dollars. And if we take the transaction fee into consideration, um, this, arbitrage, this arbitrage transaction actually lose money. But still, uh, arbitrage is a very interesting use case for flash loans. And uh, we have also seen many that profitable arbitrage cases. Um, the, another potential use case is wish trading. So um, we all know that the trading volume of an asset is the, uh, is the important metric that indicating the its trading popularity. So the most popular assets therefore are supposed to be traded the most. So uh, we can see in our example, the, the trader takes some flash loan and, uh, uh, and uh, trade forward and backward in the same market and finally pay back the ESA to the liquidity pool. And obviously these two trades are, um, are quite fake. This actually not a real trading happened between the, the real traders. But it it did generate some generate um, increase the increases the, the trading volume by two thousand DAI. And uh, the the nice part of the the flash loan is that normally if you want to increase the 
the, the trading volume a lot, you basically, you typically need a lot of upfront money to do this. But uh, using a, with a flash loan, you don't need anything. You just need to pay some cost and the flash loan interest and uh, as well as the transaction fee. And you can, you do can kind of uh, boost the trading volume a lot. This is another uh, real world example for wash trading. And uh, although we can see that the, the, the trees are actually very small, like only two USD dollars, but because this market, this loon, this uh, Uniswap market is quite uh, silent uh, at that time. So these two trees actually increased the 24 hour volume of this market by 25%. So yeah, we, we can see that they do somebody is doing the, um, doing the wash trading using the flash loan. So yeah, we, as I said, different from the upcharge, the, the, the purpose of wish trading is not only, not for profit, but to increase the trading volume. So in the figure, we should show the cost that is required to boost the trading volume of some of some units that markets on the different interest rate. And uh, we can see that you can actually double the trading volume with a relatively low cost, like about uh, $250 to, to double the trading volume of this uh, quite actively trading market. All right, so yeah, so um, besides this, this interesting use cases, we also, uh, I guess most of you already know that there are two, there were two famous BZX flash loan attacks happened in the February this year. And uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I think there are many blogs or technical reports has uh, have described uh, these two attacks in detail. And um, yeah, we also described it based on our own understanding, we described these two attacks in our paper. So um, mm, simply speaking, the, uh, the adversary takes some flash loan and uh, performed some very smart operations and, uh, and we end up with a large amount of revenue so in the attack one, we can see that the adversary only spent like 130 USD uh, dollar transaction fee and uh, end up with like more than 300,000 USD dollars revenue. Uh, and uh, similarly in the attack two, uh, the revenue is even higher and the, the transaction fee is, is quite low compared to the profit. So as the researchers, uh, we may wonder, uh, did the adversaries um, perform in the optimal way? So did the adversaries, whether the adversaries left some money on the table? So, so we actually want to find this out. We, we use a very, very simple method. We formulate all the relevant DeFi platforms into mathematical models. We set an objective function aiming to maximize the final ETH revenue of the adversary. Um, yeah, we also based on the, the state of different uh, DeFi platforms at the time mm, the two attacks happened, we add the constraints into our model. The constraints basically limited the action that the um, the, adverse, the, the adversary could, could perform. So basically it means that if all the constraints are, which means if all the constraints are satisfied, the, the, the adversary transactions won't be reverted. So in this way, we formulate the attack into a parametric optimization problem. And yeah, we can see the two figures in the bottom, like, Although the operations by the adversaries are quite 
looks looks quite uh, complicated. The mathematical model is not that complex, so it can be simply solved and use some mathematical tools. So we basically use quadratic programming to solve the optimization problem and get the optimal parameters that uh, maximize the revenue. And we validate these parameters in our emulator. So the emulator we just fork, um, we had just used the tool like Gnatch to, to fork the user room at the block when the attacks happen. And uh, yeah, we solve it and we see how much um, how much easier would the, the adversary have to have made. So yeah, we can see that uh, it actually boosts the revenue a lot. So in the attack one, it boosts the revenue from 350,000 uh, US dollar to like more than 800,000 US dollar. And uh, similarly in the attack two, uh, the, the revenue can be boosted up to uh, more than yeah one million dollars, which is quite amazing. And uh, so yeah, so this is the yeah this is a full academic paper, and uh, yeah I think uh, the, I will attach the link there, and uh, if you want to see more details, and yeah, feel free to um, check out the paper. Um, yeah, that's my. Presentation. I'm happy to take any questions.